Worse is the hallways, lunchtime, before and after school, that's when he would get harassed the most. And those are times where, unfortunately, there's not a lot of staff around and, you know, kids are uh, vulnerable. The thing that she told me was, well, whatever it is, don't come out to your friends here. There are people who aren't straight and there are people who are transgender and you know they live with us they eat with us and they're completely normal people you know and it's amazing how many people don't realize that Hands hardly moving at all. i was uh, talking on the phone and i uh, experienced a drive-by someone screamed out their window shut the f up fag and that was the first offense i've ever had against someone against me being gay so it was it's been a very rare occurrence for me um, I, in middle school, high school, even college, I went to a pretty conservative Catholic college. I was not out at all, and I was, um, I wasn't bullied, but it was because I tried so hard to fit in, uh, and I regret that. I regret not just being who I was more, and just, um, but it's hard. It's hard to do that sometimes. I attempted to kill myself, and I'm very happy today that that attempt was unsuccessful, but at the time, it's all that I could contemplate. I thought I need to end things right now. Things like, you know, that's so gay. I think what people don't realize about the effects of that is, when, when, I, like, when people say like, that's so gay around me, I, don't, I actually don't feel offended, but I tell them not to, is because of the detrimental effects it has for people who are still in the closet. Because when they hear things like, that's so gay, they think then that that's so gay is a negative thing, so then they become afraid to come out of the closet. So I think we're all conditioned to accept a certain level of homophobia in society, so if someone uses the N-word, like, everyone is going to be all riled up about it, and people will be like, oh my god, you can't say that. But if you call someone a fat gay baby, that, that's fine, people will just think you're funny. You know, I grew up Southern Baptist, and, you know, it's, it's very scary as a kid because you're always taught, you know, that, oh, gay is wrong, you're going to hell. So, you know, you're basically scared into believing those thoughts, and it's all what you're taught. You know, these kids don't learn it themselves. It's all what they're taught from the older generations. Three, four. Well, my, my best friend is actually a lesbian, and she went to school in the city, and she would walk down the street, and little, like, boys, young boys, would run up behind her and throw rocks at her. A lot of parents call up, and um, not necessarily, you know, sexual preference, whatever, it was just bullying in general. Um, and a lot of parents were really scared for their kids. Because GSA is so like, I'm not sure there's the right word for it, but it's like such a romantic idea in a sense, you know, like where a lot of kids like celebrate GSA, this and that, and I think for you, like for someone who's still kind of like in the closet or like halfway out to take that big step into GSA is a huge step. And because GSA is like, made such such a big deal because everyone's always talking about it, this and that. It becomes like a really big deal to be a part of. I was actually rejected by that group for a lot of different reasons. Most of them being that I was bisexual, not 100% gay. But gay people who don't participate in GSA are people who still aren't that okay with being gay yet because GSA kind of almost is like a public statement of being gay. I think when you take that step, that to some, for someone to take that stuff, you have to be really okay with it. You can't, you can't be ambivalent, you can't have like, you know, any like second thoughts about it. So for people who aren't in GSA, that would be my interpretation of them. And it's true, I would say, 9 out of 10 times. I think it should be 
an open dialogue for teachers and students in classrooms because for teachers to say they don't see it is a lie and for teachers to say that there's no opportunity for them to stop it is a lie and I think that if there ever are reports of anti-gay bullying going on in schools, teachers need to be on that and not just turn the other eye because it's, no matter what your personal beliefs are, it's completely disgusting and inappropriate that children aren't comfortable in their own schools. This year, actually, we're getting um, anti-bully training. So the whole staff is getting it, and all of the students are getting it. There's an anti-bully curriculum that we're, we developed um, last year, so there everyone's getting it. Like you. Well, I think teachers in general uh, play the role of role models in schools, um, someone to look up to, uh, to their students. And I think that uh, schools should strive to have openly gay or openly lesbian, bisexual, transgender teachers to be role models for LGBT students. Um, a lot of uh, LGBT students growing up have no adult role models, so they have no conception of what an LGBT um, adult life is like, or what it, you know, what it means to be uh, gay and an adult. And so I think having gay teachers can uh, solidify in their minds that yes, you can lead a successful, happy, fulfilling life as a gay individual. You might be loved Living in such close proximity to a gay person made me a little bit nervous, but I can say really honestly within the first hour, I said we're gonna be absolutely fine and there's no one else I would live with on this floor. I promise it gets so much better. Think of your life as a book, and sometimes if high school's hard, it's just that part and you're gonna get to the good part. It gets better. You don't have to um, listen to what the bullies say to you, or you don't have to listen to what you know society tells you, or to what bigots tell you, or to what you know, far-right Christian groups tell you, and all you have to do is be yourself and there are going to be people who will accept you for that. So. It will get better, I promise you. It will get better. I mean, being, being a teen or an adolescent and being gay is a really hard thing, especially with the, the way the world is set up today, but it's going to get better. You're going to find people who accept you, you're going to learn to love yourself, and it's just going to be great. So just, I would tell gay teens to hang in there because they have a really great life. It gets better. 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 It does get better. I mean, they can get out of their situation. You know, they don't, it's not the end of the world if they're gay. And the other thing they need to realize is if they're gay, they're going to stay that way. There's nothing they can do to change. Because there are so many kids who try so hard. And that causes you so much stress. And I think just, just accept yourselves and know that your situation can improve.